Welcome to our first or second, uh, second uh, crowdcast or Patreon interview of October. Today we have Arman Gudmundsson, archaeologist at the National Museum of Iceland and a noted tolerator of my Icelandic. Uh, you've already appeared on the channel once uh, in a video uh, in which we looked at some very early artifacts from Iceland settlers. You will also soon, I don't know exactly when, uh, be in some videos on Ian McCollum's channel, Forgotten Weapons, because you showed him some swords and axes from yeah, uh, yeah, H. Iceland. Yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah. when he posts those. So yeah. could you tell us a little bit about your professional background and about the kind of things that you're working on right now to start with? Yeah, as you uh, mentioned, I'm an uh, archaeologist at the uh, National Museum of Iceland. Uh, I start, started working at the museum, uh, really well, first as a part of a, a summer job in 2011. And then I was uh, assigned to a uh, special project within the museum in 2014. And uh, basically uh, started uh, then my, say, a full, full-time job at the, uh, at the uh, museum. And... Um, Majority of my work consists of uh, uh, evaluating um, uh, archaeological data uh, that the archaeologists in the field must uh, hand in uh, every artifact or uh, and, and, and data from their um, uh, research. It has to be uh, uh, you know handed handed to the um, national museum, uh, and there are some protocols and. Um, stuff that that they need to follow basically and my work is to you know go over all the data and see if it's you know proper you know properly done probably labeled and in the right format so it can basically fit fit our archive uh, as smooth as possible um so that's my um, uh, regular routine if you like um but uh, as an archaeologist at the museum, of course, I do a lot of other things as well. Uh, uh, you know, when, when constructing uh, exhibitions and stuff like that, uh, the, uh, the specialists um, uh, uh, take part in that work as well. And we were, uh, um, uh, this year, early this year, we launched a uh, new uh, small exhibition on uh, on iron smelting in Iceland, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I took part in that work. Uh, really interesting uh, and 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 so uh, fascinating, let's say, opportunity for me uh, to be able to um, take part in that work. Um, but um, yeah. I, Maybe just a little bit about myself then, so you know who this guy really is. Oh. <clears throat> um, uh, I finished my bachelor degree in archaeology at the University of Iceland, and uh, then I uh, went abroad to Sweden, in Lund, and uh, took my master's there, uh, finished 2011. Uh, came home and there was, uh, there was uh, a post-crash, well, you can say there was a uh, economic crash in Iceland 2008. Uh, so basically, there was not much to do for an, uh, an archaeologist there uh, at, the, at this time, 2011, 2012. So I uh, enrolled in another program at the university, uh, the uh, uh, project management in um, in uh, the uh, say um, for the uh, governmental sector. Uh, so I talk, took my second master's in that, basically, okay. which has actually benefited me really much in my work at the at the at the museum as well, since there is of course some uh, uh, governance in, in in involved in going over the data and stuff, and we have to report to the Cultural Heritage Agency in Iceland how actually the archaeologists are are uh, handling their data. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about uh, about me. I'm I'm sitting in my home. Uh, I've, I've chosen uh, uh, you know one of the better uh, backgrounds. I'm a little bit 
uh, uh, renovating. So if I if I would move the computer a little bit, you will see um, it doesn't look that nice, basically all the way around. But about <laughs> I, I sympathize with the problem. Um, oh, yeah. I wanted to ask a little bit about something you mentioned uh, earlier with the uh, the iron smelting exhibit. Is that mm -hmm. the one right now that's on the second floor at the museum? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, that's a yeah. really interesting exhibit. Um, yeah. And I see that uh, Lorianne is asking a question here. You you spoke about iron smelting. Did the early people import trees and make their own charcoal? No, uh, they actually used the uh, or, or or made the charcoals out of the birch. That was uh, that was. Uh, a widespread uh, uh, in Iceland, and birch is actually uh, a fantastic uh, uh, resource for fuel for for iron smelting. Uh, so they used the wood here that were present from the settlement period and up to up to the um, up to the medieval times. Um, and one of the issues we actually touched upon in this exhibition was that. Um, that the deforestation in Iceland, because now that really, really, uh, 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 I would say, small forest here now, uh, in in comparison of what it was uh, uh, in the settlement period, and the myth, one of the myths that the people have been told that okay, that's because of all the iron smelting, they actually used up majority of the birch wood. Uh, but um, that argument is really weak, basically, if you look at, look at the data. For example, uh, in the uh, largest iron smelting uh, areas uh, across the country now, those areas today are the areas which, which are, you know, largest forest today. Huh. So they have actually survived. And that, that uh, at least in my my view, uh, that means that the people that were using the birds for for fuel or the you know using the wood, they actually did that in sustainable way. They actually cared about the forest, and of course because it was so uh, you know important uh, for this kind of uh, uh, process. Because you have to think about that the you know, um, access to iron uh, at this particular time uh, is, you know, I would say fundamental. You know, white is not a strong enough word. I would use fundamental uh, you know, because those who didn't have access to iron, there was basically no hope for you. Uh, so, um, so the iron production, the iron smelting was extremely important uh, for you know, everyday life. If you just think about it, you know, you know, the houses, they are, they actually stay together because of the nails and stuff uh, from the, uh, you know, made out of iron. And uh, all the tools for agriculture and husbandry all are, you know, linked to iron, iron production. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, essential, essential to the living. Basically, and um, and um, so no, they did not import uh, wood to uh, use for the fuel. Um, they used the birch and 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 um, and um, they produced actually high quality iron, and because the soil um, and a little bit maybe maybe it's now now it's time to give you a little bit warning. You know, uh, uh, before I go, be, be, be good, because I tend to ramble on, and actually, and and I can go in every direction. That's and fine. So can we? Have to be prepared for that, and it's just because I'm talking, and then like, oh wait, finally think about something I really need to address. And That's one thing uh, uh, linked to iron smelting is that the um, um, one of the myths. Basically, was that that the um, that we couldn't have produced iron here? Um, actually, my old professor in Lund, he, he told me, Arman, okay, the, the iron smelting Iceland. That's you know, they must have imported all the iron. Why did they said that? Because the uh, the clay here lacks the quality 
of which the uh, clay, for example, in Scandinavia has. And it's really white, so in the process, uh, in the in, in the process of smelting iron, because you have to um, insulate the ovens or the hearths or the smelters with certain clay or clay. Um, the uh, the problem with the with the Icelandic clay it is really young geologically, so uh, it doesn't have the um, level of silica that you need. I see. Oh. Um, but um, uh, recent recent experiments made by the Hersvik group, for example, uh, in Erikstad 2019, which was actually the start of this uh, of this exhibition or the main what is it, the main thing that we wanted to show in the exhibition was the experimental work done by among others the Hersvik group. Um, and they tried to, okay, we, we know from archaeological sources here in Iceland that they were, in fact, smelting iron. They were, in fact, using the Icelandic clay. They were, in fact, insulating the ovens with Icelandic clay. How did they do it? How did they actually raise the silica level? Um, and through some tests, and um, they, they figured out a plausible answer. And that was actually to uh, roast horse manure, horse manure and then put the ashes into the clay. That actually raises the silica level and then the clay became usable for the purpose of smelting. Be, okay. so, uh, so, so then that's, you know, that myth is then debunked. <laughs> like, <laughs> so of course, we you know, you know, just think about it. You know, uh, importing all the iron that you actually uh, actually needed from abroad to Iceland is just ludicrous because the amount is so extremely much. You know, it would take many, many hundreds of ships, you know, actually to uh, uh, transport this. And why transport it when you actually had the knowledge about how to how, how to produce iron? You had the fuel. You you had the uh, you know ovens or hearth. You had had everything, and you have one really uh, vital, of course, vital ingredient that is iron-rich soil. And the soil here in Iceland is really iron-rich due to the uh, multiple uh, uh, eruptions. Which uh, the you know you know the volcanoes here have been really uh, uh, productive in and you know pumping out iron and from the earth core. Uh, so actually, um, uh, the soil, if you find the iron rich soil in the maybe in the swamps area or in the mire, for example, it can be up to 90% iron. Hmm. So and they, they actually, the Herstelberg group uh, award the team uh, at Eriksdal 2019, where they had this uh, experiment going. They produced um, uh, uh, iron, which is 99.89 pure iron. And that's actually as good as it gets, basically. Huh. So uh, actually, Lorian had asked a question related to this. So iron ore then isn't mined in Iceland. It's produced from the, from the soil. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually um, it it, um, it actually um, um, it can be found, especially in mires, uh, swamps, uh, marshes. Um, but it can also be found just in regular, you know, sandy silts, you know, just just some regular soil. Uh, but the mire was actually. Um, Really, or or is even today. If you if you if you travel, uh, you know, across the country, and you see some, you know, uh, small small river in in in, in some mire, yeah, you can actually see the orange red color of the of of, of the of the water, and that's actually a, a, a sediment that is on top of the stones, and that is iron. I see. So it's everywhere. Actually, I've observed little 
creeks of that color and i so i know what you're talking about that's really cool i would not have of thought yeah. of that being related to iceland's you know medieval uh, material independence yeah they actually as i said they they used it in this uh, kind of a, a tap slack uh, uh, process of, uh, of 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 producing uh, iron and it, it actually uh, I, I, I think it was maybe around um well it's you know different uh, from each location here in the country, but the smelter, the the iron smelting declined quite a bit, maybe from the 15th century and onwards. Mm. And that's due to uh, different um, uh, production methods in, for example, in Northern Europe and Scandinavia, with this mass-produced iron. That actually then actually the the import was much cheaper and you know manufacturing iron in Iceland was then maybe not as cost effective as it was before but still in some cultural layers from 17th and 18th century you can still see some evidence of this tap slag uh, which is actually a clear indicator of iron smelting. Well, so that continued for quite a while in, in probably yeah. more remote areas with less access to trade. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, a question about another resource you were mentioning here. Uh, Adrian asked, isn't birch tar also really high quality? I remember it being used for Viking ships too. Yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually true. Uh, but um, uh, just to mention, I'm I'm not a, a, what is a, a tree specialist, <laughs> and sure. but I know there's uh, I, and there's uh, um, there are different uh, types of birch, um, and um, uh, but uh, but all of them produce or, or have you know, quality tar, and I actually when I was um, when I was working in Norway. Uh, I, I witnessed this kind of a, a tar mill. It's called. It's actually where the birch trees were collected, and then they were set on fire, a small fire, just roasting. And it was um, in a hill, maybe like this. So it was, it was tilting, and then the tar actually could just you know run through and out of the trees. And of course, in, in, extremely vital uh, resource and and really good question. Because it, it, you know, it was important as well, the tar. And on, on a procedural level, uh, Chaba asks, I'm interested in which method of archaeological field survey uh, you're using most frequently in Iceland to locate the archaeological sites. Um, yeah, well, um, what methods? Um, um, there are few. There are a few, um, a few methods that we use. Um, it is primarily done by archaeologists here in Iceland. They do this uh, archaeological surveys, but I know uh, from maybe, I, I know this from Scotland, for example, they have uh, uh, volunteers who actually go first and uh, locate some of the ruins and then the archaeologists come uh, afterwards a little bit and that's, um, part of uh, trying to uh, um, uh, save uh, some of the um, uh, ruins at the coast, because that is actually eroding quite fast there and as well here in Iceland. But uh, as methods, well, uh, for example, um, last time I was on an archaeological survey, um, I was part of some uh, uh, constructional, constructional work that was happening in the northeast part of Iceland, the um, uh, National Museum actually uh, owns uh, a few old buildings uh, scattered, uh, uh, you know, all around the island. And at this uh, site is called Sjöðanes in northeastern Iceland. We plan to uh, expand the uh, the parking area or, or creating a, a new parking area. And part of that then actually means that the archaeologists need to go at the site, at the farmstead, and register all the um, ruins at the um, 
at the uh, you know or, or close to the parking lot and and and, and you know stuff like that. So uh, I went there and uh, basically um, it's the similar procedure as I was uh, um, uh, uh, familiar with in Norway. Um, actually, you have some idea. They have you have uh, uh, you have um, uh, read the old sources. Uh, you know, uh, about the site, uh, mentioning some of the buildings and 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 um, and stuff like that, uh, and then you actually uh, go onto the field with that, you know, armed with that knowledge, and uh, uh, walk uh, over all the area and uh, uh, register every archaeological element that you see. Uh, point it out in GPS and uh, photograph it, and um, and and, and uh, uh, register it in um, in a, in a GIS kind of GIS software, which created create a, a shape file shape shape files which can be uploaded to the um, to the cultural heritage agency database. Uh, which you know everybody can just look at and 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 then see what I've been done doing <laughs> basically i see uh was that understandable <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay so um so what for example I, i'm kind of interested in some of these archaeological sites and in, in particular that are around iceland because you know as, as you drive around the ring road i would say iceland is not a place where you know very frequently there's some ruins to stop and look at, right? I mean, one of the places I think about where you, you can look at something uh, that was constructed a pretty long time ago is uh, Glimbair up by Skagafjord, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the, the old turf houses yeah. Yeah. that they have yeah. preserved there. But is am, am I right in my impression that there's not a ton of quote unquote ruins in Iceland? And, and is there a reason for that? Are you then asking? Um... If there are, uh, why are there not so many ruins yeah. or... Or am yeah, I yeah. wrong that there's not so many? Are, are there more than I'm realizing? Uh, I would say that's a lot more than you realize. Okay. okay. Uh, and and, and, and um, uh, uh, it's not because of the population, because the population is, is you know, we have always been few <laughs> here. And, um, and, and it, but it's, uh, it's due to the fact that a large quantity of the, of the country are uh, wilderness and has not been, um, a, you know, agriculturally changed, mm. you know, has not been plowed. And, you know, uh, for example, when I was working in Norway, when you will, you know, you know, do the survey, surveys, uh, randomly you can, you could see the ruins. You can you could see the houses and, and stuff like that. But here in Iceland, you can see some of these ruins, some of the houses. Um, and uh, for example, uh, uh, near the national uh, near the yeah national airport Keflavik, there's a ruin, uh, the house which uh, was uh, excavated, which I took part in. Uh, is from the settlement period, or actually a little bit prior to the uh, 874 uh, year, that um, according to the sagas, uh, and there you can actually just come and you can see the walls, so you can see the structure, and it's more a thousand years old, hmm. um, because you know some of the of the walls were quite intact, and that's. That's something uh, you know quite unique to Iceland that, that you can actually, um, or maybe not unique, uh, a little bit special at least, because um, at least in my experience working in Scandinavia, you really seldomly see this level of preservation. Uh, meaning you seldomly see or can excavate the walls of a building, for example. The only thing that is actually remaining because of the plow has gone over all, 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 all the houses. You can see the, you know, the remarks of the house in the soil. You can see the post holes and the wall, you know, foundations 
and everything that has been you know dug into the earth you can see mm-hmm. but the walls are more more or less gone but of course this is a you know a little bit you know it is simplification and all that there is of course sites in scandinavia that that you can see more preservation but um uh, for the majority of the excavations that i had to part uh, take part in iceland um you can see the walls you can see the uh, interior of the um, of the houses and uh, stuff like that so the preservation is quite good actually um and just to you know go back to your questions question a little bit i would think there's a lot more uh still intact that you can have a real basically okay i mean i uh of course i wasn't aware about the uh the site down by kepler because that's something that the no. public can go look at or yeah 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 it's open it's just you know open air there's small sign uh, uh next to the um uh, next to the uh, uh next to the site but as far as i'm i know there is no actually um there no um uh, advertisement or something for this ruin at the Kepler airport or near that that okay do we want to travel 1200 years to the past turn left uh, I mean, because I like would... that. Yeah, you you need to. Uh, um, yeah, well, you have to have to know certain people, I guess. <laughs> first okay. and, and, well, next and, next time I'm there, uh, we should meet there or something. Definitely, definitely. Okay. I'm more have more than happy to show you the site. That would be uh, really cool. Actually, uh, really interesting site. Oh, it sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping now that I can make like a late summer visit, maybe kind of an annual thing. So yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. a cool thing to do next time. Definitely. Um, looking back to uh, uh, this video that we made, uh, the, this this most recent visit, um, Martha, uh, who couldn't be here live, says uh, she really enjoyed the video and would like to hear more about the use of woolen fabric as currency. If you have any comments you could make about that. Yeah. Um, um that was actually uh important with a uh, a current a currency and it was one of the things that we export for example with the you know the you know the balmuff and the textiles um and um with, with the lack of any real you know you know money doesn't come into the economy until yeah, well, some historians maybe know this, this a little bit better than me, but um, it's fair. It, it, it's it, it's fair to say that uh, that we didn't see any real, real money, real real coins, if you like. Uh, not until with the Danish monopoly and the um, and the trade, then uh, people actually uh, uh, you know traded traded with uh, uh, different goods of course and excellent point that the that the valmo and the and the wool and the fabric you know related to that was important currency um but as an uh, um, archaeologist um of course we interpret what we find in the soil that's our data and uh, um the 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 textile um, um, not you know they they tend to preserve rather badly mm. or the organic material but it it is um it is different from site to site of course uh but still we have a uh, uh, lot of quantities of or you know many interesting textile objects uh which actually means that this was important and people were um people were uh, uh, exchanging uh you know this type of uh, 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 product among themselves for something else um, and since this you know um country uh, have been labeled as you know prime prime country for sheep farming um 
that's actually uh, what we you know produced in large quantities was then you know um, product related to wool. Uh, I'm not sure if I I have answered the question, uh, but I, I think you know, so. stuff on a little bit. And I, maybe this is a little bit more for for the historians. Um, well, but, I would point out. Uh, in connection with this, though, that at the museum on the main floor, uh, there are some really incredible uh, textiles uh, from yeah. the Middle Ages that are on display there. There was one yeah. in a, a, a you know, just trying to remember what everything that I saw there. There was one in a drawer on the exhibit floor. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that had incredible true color still. Yeah, yeah, uh, must have been from one of the uh, bishop's sites or the uh, clusters or something like that. Could, could that be? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, uh, or you know, from this kind of uh, high status uh, sites, uh, you know, because this it, it was extremely valuable, and it was not, I know, uh, affordable by by the common man, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, worn by the uh, members of the of the church and the bishops. Uh, this is the uh, it's called Hökler in Icelandic. Hökler. Yeah. 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 Um, this kind of at at uh, sound which is really good, cool. Hökler. Yeah. It is cool. It is cool. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But I'm sure I, I can dig up a picture of that if I go digging my pictures. But it would take me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. Find it, but yeah, but it's yeah. but I'll put it on the video when I post this. Yeah, um, exactly. Andrea asks, what's the most unusual artifact that you've encountered? If there's that, one that stands out, that's a that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I had one artifact. Um, okay, I'm gonna tackle this my way. Um, I, I I had this uh, the uh, for maybe um, it was a month ago or a month ago. Um, uh, a person came. Uh, to the museum with a stray find, a uh, loose find, meaning it was found without archaeological context. Um, and I, th th I think it was the tourist came to the, um, the museum, uh, a main building or where the exhibition is, and told them, okay, I found this stone and I think it is old and I think it is man-made. Uh, it, ha it has some uh, green stuff stuck in it. Um, uh, could you please uh, send this to some of your specialists? And um, you know, because I'm leaving the country, and I, I, I think it should be you know kept here. And uh, you know, of course, this is you know extremely important artifact, and you have to you know uh, be really kind to it. Um, and I got. This, as many of the uh, objects that, that people find, actually, the stray finds, it ended up on my desk. Hmm. Uh, and I've been constantly thinking about it ever since. And I am not sure that this is man-made or not. Uh, it looks a little bit like it has been uh, a cut in the middle uh, or it has some incision. Uh, on it, and I thought first it could be maybe used for sharpening something, needle or knife or something, but it's not that type of stone that you would, you know, use for sharpening. There is, you know, it's not this kind of a wet stone uh, type. Uh, but in this, um, in this uh, line in the stone, in the crevice, so it'd be, because it comes a little bit down in stone like this, V-shaped, uh, uh, green, there's a green stuff stuck in this hole. Um, and my first impression was this was some cast or this was because it, 
it really looked like some copper alloy uh, stuck in it. So it, it could have been some cast for some needle or something like that. Hmm. So I fetched my uh, 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 magnetism and tried to you know figure out, okay, is it magnetized? It's not magnetized. So what is it? Basically, I'm not sure of it, but I really like this kind of artifacts that actually keeps me thinking over the day, what mm. on earth can this be? Um, and um, the, I'm not sure yet. Um, I contacted other, the other specialists in the, in, the, in, in the museum and they have been, they, they, they were just, you know, stumble, you know, as well. They were just, okay, this, okay. I, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> they say because, um, more than often, you can see a clear sign if it's man-made or not. Hmm. Uh, this has both, which is you know, irrit you know, irritating as well. Because, um, uh, but um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, we we'll do some maybe some XRF analysis on the elements or on on the on the on this the this greenish stuff in it and. Um, um, the, you know, because the stone itself is more likely just you know normal basalt stone, uh, which is really a common in Iceland. Um, but yeah, this is really uh, really a, a tough artifact, and I, I I do like the challenge. I do like the challenge, and and um, and, and uh, one day we will crack the code, and I will let you know what it is. Okay, cool. Um, I mean that is a mystery. Well, I I was trying to think of what, I mean, without seeing it, just trying to picture this and, and wondering what it would be. And like you said, maybe a mold sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, you know, the, the, the other molds that we have uh, made out of stone, it's made out of uh, sandstone. Hmm. I said sandstone, which is really easy to carve and really, that, that, that then of course, good to cast and, you know, good for being a mold. But, um, but uh, but this this rock it's so it, it, it's so um, it's so it's called uh, rigid it's so uh, strong hard hmm. basically uh, so using that as a as a, as a, as, a, as a mold perhaps I'm not sure but um, yeah but and and then again the uh, you know it gets trickier. It gets trickier, a lot trickier, because um, we do find just the normal stones here, you know, with a little bit holes that that maybe look look like have been drilled or uh, some scrape mark that you think okay, this then must must be a man-made. But um, when the people say, okay, I'd, I found it in the shore, I found it on the beach. That mean actually it could have been just normal natural processes processes that had actually created these kind of marks on the stone. Mm. We do have that evidence as well. So it it's um, it's not an easy job. It's really not, and it, uh, it kept me you know. But interesting enough, and um, as I said, one, once we crack the code, and and I will I will let you know. But. That, then again, I'm thinking about um, then you know finding because finding the truth in in, in everything um, maybe that's not that important basically and 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 then what is the meaning of truth? What is the meaning of okay? We need to know that this stone was just this and not something else. Um, you know, being you know being a, a, a uh, archaeologist and you know this is of course with many other disciplines of course is that um, you know finding the ultimate truth is not you know it's not the path that you're on basically hmm. um, you know you would like to have a little bit clearer picture but once you begin to dig actually find you know and search for answers the puzzle becomes more complex <laughs> basically yeah. and the more you know the more you don't know 
I know something about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but okay, but uh, that, that was uh, uh, maybe uh, too much uh, uh, theories, but, but, but at least that is, uh, you know, the stone I mentioned earlier is a good example of that. Um, okay, yeah. that's, that's, that qualifies as a good unusual artifact, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me ask the other question from someone who couldn't be here. Uh, Ronberg asked if there's a specific reason why the spindle whorls, like what we were talking about in, in our video, uh, were made of stone uh, when most of the modern ones are wooden. Yeah. Uh, perhaps that's the, uh, 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 that's maybe due to the fact that, um, um, that the, uh, that the, you know, while there were a scarcity of wood, for example, there was, you know, access to stone was quite simple and easy. So um, it could just be that. But then again, um, access to soapstone in Iceland is really tricky, as a, as a runway, uh, I, I, I guess, should know. Um, and uh, so, so that's definitely some uh, a material that you have to import. Uh, and then again, um, why do we um, see more of the spindle world in stone, not the wood? It could be just a really simple explanation as well. Uh, it could be just on uh, because it's you know more preserved. Mm. We actually find more of the stone because it you know survives different you know acidity in the in the soil much much better than the wood. Sure. It doesn't mean that the wood was not used, but it's not. It, it just not. It is it, as present as the stone. Hmm. Oh, makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, it makes sense. Yep. Uh, Stella asks: Are there any plans to have more digital access to things like pictures of artifacts from the National Museum, or does an archive or something similar already exist online? Um, uh, our database, uh, or not just our ours, because it, it's um, it's a cultural database in Iceland called Sarpur. Dot I S. S A R P U R Sarpur. Yeah, yeah. Dot I S. And that's a database for many museums, actually. Um, there you can uh, look up the artifacts uh, from, uh, you know, from the National Museum, from the art gallery and, and stuff like that. But uh, it's still only in Icelandic, I think. Mm. Um, and it, in my view, really strange and something that uh, that we really need to uh, address and upgrade, uh, because of course people from all over the world, you know, has um, uh, you know need to get access to this, or at least if they have, if if, if they want, they should be able to just switch the language. And um, I, I, but I, I, I think actually that the software is in um, uh, upgrade phase. Uh, so, uh, and this is one of the criteria that people have been saying, okay, it must be in, you know, at least in English as well. So you can actually uh, go and, and there you can look up the artifacts, as I said, the archaeological artifacts. And um, some of them have, have, have pictures or photo associated with the Rex there, but some of them lack the photo. And we are now, uh, you know, putting uh, uh, a focus on actually um, uh, make this register better than than, than the uh, so so every every um, every artifact artifact has a picture associated with it. That's, uh, that's cool. It's I a, need to dig around that a little bit more. Yeah, it's a it's a huge work, especially in the photographic. Um, uh, department of the National Museum. Uh, there is around 8 million uh, photographs uh, 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 in the photographic archive of the museum. Uh, and I think we have registered uh, with photo around 200,000. So there's a little bit left. So if you know of somebody who really you know, loves uh, registering for free, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. The, you know, you know, for free, but uh, but uh, there is a job to be done here. Okay, that's very cool. Uh, who should who should such a person talk to? 
Who, who should an applicant for that position talk to? Uh, you, you could uh, you could talk to the uh, uh, photographic department of the National Museum. You could talk to you, know, you could you could talk to talk to me even, and I could you know move it along. And uh, and and but but of course, uh, I can just uh, I can say whatever I like here, and it's not my actually place to uh, um, to 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 hire people and you know make this kind of a <laughs> that's not Still, my, that's not well, my job. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking this video could potentially connect you with someone who'd be willing to do it. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. Would throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 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 you know, but yeah, yeah. At this, it is basically all hands on deck, and uh, and 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 we do um, outsource some of the register work that we are doing. Um, I know some groups in I think it's in Husavik in the northern mm -hmm. part of Iceland. Uh, there were actually, I think it's still some group of um, uh, of some people who are actually uh, just with you know uh, every day in the week you know come together and register a few few a few artifacts and uh, photos. Oh, it's like like bird banding. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, Chaba had another question here. Uh, I've heard that before the Scandinavian settlement, there were allegedly monks from Celtic areas settled in Iceland. Is there any archaeological evidence to back this up? I was waiting for this question. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> waiting, waiting eagerly or waiting with dread? What, what, what kind of word? Uh, <laughs> eagerly, because, uh, because, it's a, because it's a good question. Uh, it, because in the sagas, uh, there is a, a um, there, there are some, li some lines in London book, for example, I think it's London book, that actually mentioned that that you know prior to the Scandinavian, there were some uh, um, hermits, some Irish monks, some, and and they left behind with them you know some books and some bells and stuff like that. Uh, but unfortunately, the archaeological data to back this up is really scarce to to say the least um and uh, so um uh, so i as an archaeologist i i can't say oh am I, if, if i'm just gonna you know interpret the data the archaeological data that we have now then i would say that this is unlikely to happen that there were any you know iris monks or or hermits but then again, we never know. We never know. It could have been there are there are some uh, Celtic uh, uh, place names in Iceland. Uh, it, it seems to uh, cluster or some some uh, around some regions. It is interesting. We do have uh, we actually um, have a great interest in this uh, as a as a nation. Um, you know. Uh, thinking about that, you know, it must have been some uh, special people here in Iceland prior to the uh, Norwegians and the, uh, and the Sweden and the Danes that actually came and settled here. It just must be because we are so special. Uh, we're so, such a, a grand people. So it must have been some, uh, some other than just the lame Scandinavians who actually came. But, um, but, uh, but the old, basically, the archaeological data just tells us this uh, it doesn't back this up. Uh, it doesn't back up the, the Iris and the Celtic kind of um, uh, story. But uh, it is interesting. And, and this has survived in folklore. And it's a part of the uh, soul of the nation, I would say. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so you... You can study this via uh, the folklore and uh, stuff like that, but it, it's really tricky to do this and study study this, you know, uh, through archaeological methods. But uh, you never know. Uh, uh, we have we have not found any structures uh, clearly associated to the hermits or the Irish monks. Um, there have been. Some uh, crosses that have been found carved in sandstone caves in southern parts of Iceland. Some say it could be 
uh, Celtic cross or some early Christian cross. Um, but um, it's really vague and really hard to actually uh, date this kind of thing because the cultural elements, they do, do tend to uh, miss the mix. And uh, some of the crosses have been associated with activities in the caves from the 18th century, for example. Hmm. And uh, just think about it with the symbols and stuff. I can use the ruin, you know, runes today. I can, you know, maybe write runes today. Sure. Uh, it doesn't mean that I am thousand years old. <laughs> right. It right. It's simple and art that's still present today. So uh, you know, always have to be a little bit, you know, you know, warned. You know, have to take this, uh, but you know, yeah, think about think think about clearly before before you say basically. Mm. But I I do feel like now and then there will be some kind of uh for iceland sensational news coverage about something that points toward maybe an earlier settlement level um i feel like i i may be misremembering this entirely but i feel like recently there was a political science professor at the university of iceland named mm -hmm. baldur or something yeah 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 baldur thought of swan yeah uh, yes, okay. yes 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 so i'm right and remember yeah, yeah, who, yeah. who was really uh really pushing it something about some caves yeah yeah uh, yeah was that yeah, they, was that the crosses or no that's uh that, that, that's a system of of caves in southern iceland uh, near a place called hatla uh and the places are called uh, i think the site is called caves of hatla if you look it up in google uh and uh, it's really that is interesting and, and 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 the story that they are say, actually are saying is interesting, but then again, when they start to talk about the archaeology behind it, it gets a little bit um, uh, light, hmm. <laughs> because as I say, uh, the archaeological data are really really scarce hmm. for you know, supporting, um, or I say. Uh, uh, yeah, let's say um, uh, people, you know, being in Iceland before 874 uh, with Iris, you know, Iris or Celtic uh, uh, origin, um, especially at these at, at these caves. But uh, but but nevertheless, it's uh, I've been there. I've taken the tour with him, uh, and uh, you know he 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 is so you know. Um, he he he's so uh, it's called um, uh, fired up, actually, uh, and really uh, uh, ambitious. And that, uh, I think he's done uh, a, you know incredible job, you know, opening these caves and and, and stuff like that. And um, going then back to the truth a little bit, because um, what he is saying that we think that uh, in these regions. Uh, people from uh, Ireland came uh, some years before the Scandinavians came and they settled here. And that's why we have uh, a place names and stuff like that that is close, closely uh, related to um, uh, Celtic's uh, place name or Irish place, name, place names. Um, it's quite right for me for him to ha have this view and even you know tell it to you know tell to people because it's a part of of the folklore basically it's a part of the belief but it, it's all good and dandy but it gets tricky if you are trying to mix it in with archaeology mm. then you know then you are on a slippery slope and then you need to take that you know you know pause a little bit um, because, as I said a million times, the archaeological data to validate this is, is really scarce. Okay. But I do like the place, and I do encourage everybody to go there and enjoying the stories and, and, and just you know taking in the spirit. Yeah. And and not to push down this this track to the exclusion of too many others, but um, it does seem like maybe there's some evidence that's pushing the Norse settlement a little bit earlier than 874. Uh, yeah. You mentioned this, this, uh, th these ruins by Keplavik. I also seem to remember there's 
by one of the big hotels in uh, in downtown Reykjavik, not too mm-hmm. far from the the all mm-hmm. thingy. There's yeah. there's a uh, an excavation that I think was a house. It's a little bit earlier than yeah the 874. So it seems like the the, the settlement, although the north settlement, is getting pushed back a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, uh, we have numerous sites, you know, across across the islands. We actually have some ruins or have some um, cultural layers uh, uh, beneath the uh, uh, tephra uh, from the settlement uh, area, uh, or from the settlement time, 870, one plus m- minus two years. Um, and uh, this, is, this is actually... Uh, <sighs> we are actually extremely lucky that we got this eruption around the time that, that the, that the island was settled. Mm. Um, because uh, uh, we do know the settlement tephra quite well. And uh, when we do find some uh, cultural elements or cultural layers beneath the tephra, it, it must mean it's older. Uh, and that's the case with uh, with the uh, 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 it's a part of a wall, I think, in 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 Alastrets in Reykjavik, uh, and it's uh, displayed at the settlement exhibition. Um, there is a, a large hall, Viking Gate Hall, uh, on on display. The hall is from the 10th century, uh, but this boundary wall this small fragment of it uh, on display that is beneath uh, I think the uh, the uh, the uh, settlement hmm. if I, you know remember correctly and uh, then we do have the site as well as water in Hupnum, uh, Hupnum, uh, close to the Keplavik airport uh, there are uh, uh, one site in the east fjord called Stöð. Uh, and stud means station in English. Uh, some um, um, uh, outpost. It could could have been. And there are actually a uh, two holes at stud, uh, and one of the holes, the larger one, is uh, uh, have been dated, you know, to be older than eighteen hundred seventy one. So that means actually people were here um, gathering resources uh, to uh, sail back to their chieftain or to Scandinavia or to the British Isles or, uh, you know, to where do you come from, <laughs> basically, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a tribute and, and stuff like that. So, uh, so we do have actually uh, numerous sites that, you know, pushes the settlements. Um, uh, I'll leave it, uh, uh, and you know, down in, in time, but um, but the uh, uh, maturity of the settlement, uh, the um, the process took place in the ninth and tenth century. Um, that's when the you know we see the bulk of people moving in, um, but uh, but this site, Hapnir. Uh, and Stöð are quite interesting in the fact that um, uh, it means actually, uh, I think I maybe mentioned that in the, in the earlier videos uh, or the you know, first video that, or the interview, I mean, um, that the you know, people had some idea about the islands mm. uh, prior, you know, long prior to the settlement. Um, they... Uh, you know, most definitely people came here, uh, maybe due to some accident or something, you know, found the island, saw the uh, resources here, gained more information on the resource, uh, and, and then at some point in time, some, some wealthy chieftain makes an uh, enterprise, actually, of going and harvest this, these resources. And... Um, this is not an easy task. This is not the you know romantic view of the sum of the freed slaves actually you know going from Norway or I'm just going to sail into the abyss and and just go in somewhere and, and try to find something. It doesn't add up. 
uh, people knew about the islands and they had have been uh, for some years, you know, um, uh, uh, harvesting the resources here, for example, the walrus tusks and the um, and, 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 and just, you know, uh, fish and, and, and birds and stuff like that. Uh, and then when you have gained enough knowledge on the island, then you take another step of circulating. Maybe now it's a time to spend the winter. Hmm. Now maybe the time to, you know, settle some of the areas because we know more about the areas. It's a little bit like, okay, if we're going to Mars, for example, uh, at some point we are maybe going to Mars, I think. But first we have to have the knowledge about the place. We have to scan it. We have to survey it. And then maybe next phase is to uh, gain some of the resources in harvesting, some of the, maybe mining. You know, the last phase is actually moving in people, you know, to stay and live there. So uh, I know, yeah, I think it could, could have been in that, that, that sense here in Iceland as well. Uh, but uh, this is just, a, just an idea. Uh, so I know, uh, and, 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 but, but in my mind, this sounds logical mm-hmm. that it, this is not, this is something that did not happen overnight. And it, and it didn't happen like it told in the sagas that people actually, okay, I don't care for this king anymore. I'm going. <laughs> and then that just, okay, fine by me. Where are you right. going? You don't have anything. <laughs> right. No, I mean, well, I mean, logically, I mean, you think about the same sort of thing, even in the exploration of North America, people didn't pack up a covered wagon and yeah. head west with no yeah. idea of what was ahead of them, no. right? They, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're preceded by trappers and yeah. and, and, and yeah. other people making maps and such. So yeah. that, 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 that makes intuitive sense. Do, do you have a revised idea of what the rough date of the earliest human activity in Iceland uh, that can be documented is? <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to tread lightly. <laughs> because yeah, sure. yeah, yeah but just like a rough <laughs> idea of what um with this place in for example in in Hapnir, as a place i know the best because i took part in the excavation um we know it is uh prior to the 870 or for you know prior to the settlement tefra because the the hall the viking age hall it's made out of uh, turf and stone, the the wall, the walls, um, and 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 the and the um, and the, uh, the, fa- the 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 building faces are actually two at least in Hafnir. Uh, in the older uh, walls, uh, we have a uh, in the turf because it's made out of turf, and um, just the soil. Um, uh, we did found some tephra, looked really like the settlement tephra. Hmm. In the younger uh, walls, we did also find find a tephra. Uh, not very, you know, uncommon, you know, due to the fact that you know eruptions are quite common in Iceland. So usually you, you get the series of tephra layers. But after analyzing. Uh, both of these uh, older, oldest tephra uh, in the turf, in the in the in the older walls, in the younger walls. Walls you can see in the younger walls you you see the settlement tephra, but in the other wall you had a tephra that was, I think, and now my actually the. Actually, the team leader will call me and say, "Okay, stop, <laughs> stop, armor, stop." But, but I think it was maybe eight hundred and fifty. But you know, of course, with all these kind of a C fourteen uh, dates, it 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 doesn't give give you you know exact time. Sure, it gives you a probability of range, basically. You know, with a uh, uh, two sigma uh, range with ninety five percent probability, you get the time period. 840, 880, for, for example. You can't say it just, you know, this exact time. You get the probability. Um, 
but uh, uh, in Stuart, um, that's a uh, 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 that's a research that's actually ongoing. So they are collecting more more uh, uh, C14 data, um, and uh, I can't remember the exact date uh, from Stuart. But uh, then again, um, it's really hard to uh, base your whole dating interpretation based on maybe one or two C14 dates. You need to have, you know, lots of them, you know, to see a clear and better picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, only thing I know from Stuart, it, it is so, some of the ruins, some of the structures are clearly, oh, and then again, cl clearly, <laughs> are more likely to be older than, you know, than the settlement periods. Okay. I can't give you any better answer than that. Okay, but but like you said, this does make intuitive sense that in the decades preceding permanent settlement, mm -hmm. whoever was in Iceland was not you know, necessarily initially even trying to settle it, but exploiting the resources there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that makes and, perfect. And, 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 and then again about Stuart, and I really think uh, uh, the, uh, hopefully the... Uh, the um, the guy who's actually heading that excavation. Uh, since this is research ongoing, it's not my place to actually just you know say everything from that side. But, but of course you can uh, read on Stuart, uh, you know, re read about Stuart at Google. It has been some articles in uh, 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 in English, for example, and some uh, some uh, tourist uh, journals and stuff like that that do mention this place. Okay. Uh, so I, I think it's common knowledge, uh, so it's all right for me to say uh, about Stur that um, that the uh, older hall was really big, hmm. really big, one of the largest in Iceland, if not the largest one. Uh, but of course, Tricky do not have all the calculations now, but it seems to be really, really large. And that's really okay. If, if you just think about it, you know, uh, uh, you know, going over the sea, uh, get, harvest some res resource of this island, and construct constructing that large house, it must mean that this was, uh, you know, th this was an enterprise. You know, mm -hmm. this was not some average Joe sending just people, you know, around to do whatever you like. This is uh, this is a, a, a you know process. It's been made. It, it's been made clear. You okay? I'm your chieftain or something like that. I will send you, and you you will gather this resource for me, and come with it home. And it's uh, so valuable this resource. And in my mind, it's a walrus tusk. I'm not 100 sure, but that's my ed educated guess. It's so valuable that we can afford to send such a large, or say, um, large uh, quantity of people to the country uh, on maybe man many ships. And, you know, so, you know, that's, that's really interesting. And one of the uh, most, uh, I'm not saying one of the most inter interesting sites in Iceland because there's a lot of interesting thing happen, uh, happening in archaeology in Iceland. Uh, but um, but um, this one, Stuart, uh, it has a uh, you know uh, article and stuff about it in English as well, so people can you know read about it all over the world. Right. Or Thank people you. who can read English at least. <laughs> and and yeah. uh, and and still is linking to one of those in the chat. Uh, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. but by the way, we don't want to you know eat into your time more than you want to give. Do you still have time for some questions or? Uh, uh, maybe it's time to uh, wrap it up soon because I was at the, at the birthday party and okay. my wife and children are there and I was supposed to uh, bring them up or, or, or uh, drive them home again because uh, today I would say is the first official day of winter in Iceland with huge storms oh, right. and, uh, snow up in the highland and stuff so uh, it's really cold and I can't of course I can't let them walk home <laughs> so uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, so maybe a few few questions more, or maybe I could do this again if you if you that like. That would be great. Yeah, we we would love to have you back. Um, 
do you, so do you want to wrap up now or do you want to take another one or two questions and let us know when you're, when you just need to go? I think it's actually time to wrap it up. Okay, that's fine. Well, well, we'll hope to have you back again. This has been really interesting and, and honestly really kind of appetite wetting. I mean, when you talk about yeah. uh, some of these discoveries really pushing back, the, well, not only pushing back the timeline, but also kind of changing the picture of what people originally were doing in Iceland. Um, mm -hmm. You know, aside from the saga story, uh, a story that really starts with, well, a new, a new place to extract resources. And that, of course, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, uh, we've yeah, really appreciated your time. Really appreciated your excellent answers to our questions. Um, okay. And uh, well, we'll wish you a good winter over in Iceland, and we'll hope to have you back <laughs> soon. I just want to say, just thank, uh, thanks for the uh, interview, thank for the uh, opportunity, and I, I, I would be more than happy to do this again, and uh, if, if you're willing, and uh, and, and th then I then actually I forgot, and I, I really have to promote my band here because I have a really good band. You have to listen to the band, the Baul. Baul. Listen Baul. to it. It's on, it's on Spotify. <laughs> and the guys actually, actually, actually my drummer, he saw the other video and say, what a fuck. The bassist from Baul is <laughs> on the interview of Crawford. What's going on? Who is this guy? <laughs> well, you'll, you'll, you'll probably get an even bigger reaction when you're on Forgotten Weapons. I mean, that's yeah, a, yeah. That's a ten times bigger channel. Yeah, well, okay. I, as I said, I've not seen that video and so on. Yeah, he hasn't posted it yet. Or well, uh, I think okay. there's two, right? And he hasn't posted either one. I don't know okay. when he will. Okay, well, at least thanks uh, again. so you know. Thanks, and until we meet again, you have some home assignments. So listen. All right. To. All right. We'll work on it. All the okay. best. To you. Thank All you. All the best, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.